All right, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm gonna to be showing you guys how to 3D track. I think this is something that's very essential for you guys to understand. And especially if you're following my tutorials and like the work I do, you should have a very fundamental understanding of how this works and how to do it. And this can apply to many different things. So after we're done this tutorial, you guys are gonna know how to 3D track anything. This is gonna be a very essential piece inside your tool case, but let's get straight into it. You can find a link in the description that's gonna have this footage so that you guys can follow along to do the exact same thing. So we're working with some log footage over here. You can bring it back so that you can actually get some more details inside of here because if it's desaturated and the exposure is low, there's not a lot of contrast inside the image for the, the program after effects to actually do what it needs to to get this 3D track. So I'll show you how I do this. And um, here's a little trick. So I usually duplicate Command D, I'll duplicate this, and then I'm just gonna hit this eyeball button just to disable the layer underneath. And on this part right here, we're gonna add a levels effect. And when we add this levels effect, we're just gonna grab both these bars from each side and we're gonna pull the blacks to where the blacks are, and the highlights up quite a bit, maybe to something around over here. And I'm not worried about the background right now because we just need enough highlights and shadows creating contrast over here so that we can get a 3D track that's solid. The next thing we're gonna do is add an unsharp mask. And this pretty much just sharpens up the image so that we have more details to work with to get a solid 3D track. So we're gonna change this on the mount to 100 and the radius to two. And that's something I usually do when I wanna get a super solid 3D track. And then we're gonna hold Shift, Command, and then hit C. And we're gonna pre-comp this all together. Select, move all attributes into the new composition, and then just rename this track, just so that you can stay organized. Because this is just a reference layer, it's not actually what we're using. So we're just gonna right click this now, we're gonna to go to track and stabilize, and hit track camera. All right, so now that it's done, you can see we have a whole bunch of tracking data inside the clip. All of these markers on the floor are pretty much telling you what tracks are solid and which ones are not. But if you really wanna make sure, you can go to advanced over here and you can see your average error. And if this is below one, probably even lower, the lower this number, the better it is. But this is an incredibly good solve for the 3D track. So I wouldn't be worried about it. And if you run into an issue where you're not getting a 3D track that's good enough, you can go to detailed analysis and click that and it'll retract the whole thing, but add more data to it and you might get an even better solid 3D track because of it. So just, just keep that in mind in case your, your 3D track is struggling. This is also an option. Use this as a backup if you need to. So in order to make sure that this 3D track is actually pretty solid, what I do typically is one of two things. You can either click this over here and when you see the target point over here is leveled with the floor, you can right click it and you can set as ground plane and origin and then right click it again and set solid and camera. And as you can see, if we scroll through it, it's pretty solid. But what you really wanna to do to make sure it's solid is select that track solid layer, go to your effects and add a grid effect to it. And it should be the one right here. And once you've done that, go over to this 3D track over here and then just rotate it on the Z axis. Press S to get your scale and just scale it up. And then from there, I want you to just move through your timeline and just hit the play button. And as you can see, you could just scroll in over here if you can look at the floor over here and that thing is not moving, you have a very solid 3D track. And if you want to remove it, just press Command Z, the undo button, and just go back to normal because we know that we have a really good track here. And in case you want to put things in different places or you want an idea of what the whole scene looks like, what you want to do in this situation is you want to create some more solids around the area just to make sure that you can see where everything is or in case you want to place something in a different place in the image, then you know exactly where that's gonna be and you have the data for that. Now if I hit play, as you can see, this track is super solid and we have everything where we want it to be. So the last thing that you should be doing is normalizing your track. And this is a practice that people don't know about, that they don't do sometimes, and it screws up their 3D track a lot. And the reason this is good is because it better syncs your objects that you're putting into a 3D space because sometimes these 3D tracks slip. And this just helps give After Effects more information to make sure that your 3D track and the things that you put in the scene is more accurate. And I will show you how to do this. All right, to do this, we're gonna go over to either scripts or you can go into help and you can just put in the word normal and your script should pop up. And as you guys can see, you get this information here where it says normalize track, normalize new layer and remove normalization and then help. We're just focused on the normalize track button. And to do this, you need to select the camera track and all of your solid layers. And then you click 
this button here where it says normalize track, but you'll run into an error where it says you need to have a base plane named ground or floor or wall. So what you could do here is you can select one of these solids here. Let's say it's the one at the front and we're just gonna right click, rename it, and we're gonna call this floor. Then once you're done that, you can reselect all of these layers again, hit normalize track, and now your normalization is done. And the reason this is good is because now if you take that asset, the 2D asset, and you put it in your scene, and I'm just gonna pull this back to retime it so that we can actually see the fire, and we go over here to where it shows this cube, and we select it and make it a 3D layer. Now we could just push it back into space where we want it to be. We can rotate it accordingly, and then press Y if you need to, and we can just bring this anchor point to the bottom right here so that when we hit S for the scale, it, it scales from the bottom of that anchor point. Just a neat little trick. But now if we just move it through the timeline, you can see that fire is sticking perfectly inside the scene. And if you don't wanna see these solids, you can just disable all of them because we don't need them anymore. Or if you wanna see these solids to make sure that you can put this exactly where you want it to be in the scene, if you want it to be over here where this green solid is on the right hand side, you can press the P button, find its position, copy it, and then press P on this footage over here and just press Command V and paste it. And then now it's gonna be perfectly where that solid is inside of the scene. And what's cool is you can just disable all of these solids now. And if you want to move this fire around, you can just push it back in this space over here. And as you can see, this fire is perfectly tracked into your scene. You can literally move it anywhere you want to. And because we normalize the comp, we can have the fire anywhere. And if you want to, you could just duplicate it and we could put it over here, for instance, and we could just retime it by pulling it over here. We could duplicate it again. We could push it even forward more and we can retime it again. And we could just put it to the side let's say over here, we can select this one, we can pull it to the side, again over here, and as you can see, if we move forward, this is a perfect 3D track. And again, remember, this was just a reference layer over here, so this track layer, we can take it off and we can re-enable the one underneath, and as you guys can see, we have a perfect 3D track in After Effects. But this is how you 3D track perfectly in After Effects. I hope this helps you guys out and join us in the next part of this tutorial so we can show you some more tips and tricks that's gonna help you on your journey mastering After Effects.